deep seismic reflection profile has provided spectacular images of the continental crust, and some of the most spectacular came about through the BURPS program in the 1980s. We're going to look at a few of these from northwest Scotland. All the images we're going to look at are on the virtual seismic atlas. So this is about the 1980s and imaging the crust and upper mantle. The initial targets for these types of experiments was to image the deep structure of fault zones, faults that we knew existed from upper crustal geology. So let's set the scene. When the first major seismic experiment to image crustal structure was the lithospheric seismic profile in Britain that was acquired in the mid-1970s. This was a wide angle experiment and the idea was to understand, as the name suggests, the lithosphere structure in Britain, particularly northern Britain, and particularly where some of the major geological structures went to with depth. So these are the major geological structures of northern Britain. We've got various fault zones through here that are labelled up, including the southern one, which is the Iaftus suture, and then there are a whole series of major fault zones that run across Scotland and can be traced across into Ireland. So the target was trying to image these. This was a wide angle experiment designed to determine seismic velocities and their variations uh, through the outer part of the Earth. And this was done by letting off a series of explosions and recording them along a profile. So here's the profile. It's 700 kilometers long. We're only looking at the northern part of it, in fact. And the display here is vertical and horizontal scales equal. And here's the result of the first processing done in the late 70s, which shows different zones of different seismic velocities color coded up in here, and the MOVE one at base there, where the seismic velocity exceeds 8 kilometers a second, is taken to be the mantle, and the other colors above there for the continental crust. So that shows the position of the MOHO across northern Britain. With increased computer power, this initial processing was developed into a more elaborate interpretation of the velocity structure. Well, actually, there's a lot of detail in the central part of here as you go between the Great Glen Fault and the Southern Uplands. In this particular presentation, we're not concerned too much with that area. We're more concerned with the left-hand side. So let's just zoom that in. So this is the seismic structure in terms of velocities beneath the Northern Highlands. Critically, we can see the MOHO there, which is where the seismic velocity jumps from around 7 kilometers a second up to 8 kilometers a second and into the mantle. And that MOHO transition occurs at slightly shallower than 30 kilometers. It's understanding that we'll take with us as we look at some of the BERT's reflection data. So there's the LISP profile, and we're going to go to the north of this into the offshore area in here. And we're going to look at images that were acquired by the BERPS program, that stands for the British Institute's Reflection Profiling Syndicate. And these images were acquired in the early part of the 1980s. And here's a map of that area, showing the coastline of mainland Scotland, the northern part of the island of Lewis, and some of the Orkney Islands over there on the right. And there's a whole series of faults that we can trace from the onshore into the offshore. The offshore tracing of the Outer Isles and Minch Fault was done through commercial seismic data that was designed to image very much the upper part of the crust and its sedimentary basins. So let's turn our attention now to the BURPS images. And the first profile that was acquired was the Moyne and Outer Isles Seismic Travers, or MOIST, that was acquired in 1981, which was an east-west line. And as its name suggests, the point of this profile was to try and see the deep structure of the Outer Isles Fault, the structures over on the left, and the Moyne thrust, which is heading towards the profile from the classic outcrops that we find in northern Scotland. So let's have a look at the moist profile. The scale here, that's a 20 kilometer horizontal scale bar, and the vertical scale there is represented in two-way time from zero down to 15 seconds. In the 1980s, when faced with a profile like this, which is pretty noisy, the first thing to do is to create a line drawing. 
which brings out the most prominent reflectors. So now let's interpret this line drawing. Well, our expectation from this profile is that the moho in this profile should be at around 30 kilometers, maybe a bit shallower because we're offshore and there's some sedimentary basins developed here. Well, 30 kilometers in two-way time with a seismic velocity of six kilometers a second would come in at about 10 seconds. Okay? And then we can think about the structure above this where there's a whole set of reflectivity that's inclined coming down towards the moho within the crust and then there's a bunch of more prominent reflectors in the very shallow part of the profile. So let's use all that information to build our interpretation here. There's the moho, and you can be offset by something coming out of the mantle called the flannel reflector, which in this case would be a fault, and it would indeed it would be a thrust fault in this interpretation. Then within the continental crust above, there are a whole series of structures inclined down to the right, which are faults, and the more reflective crust over on the eastern side, the right there, may reflect Caledonian structures that have been reactivated by normal faults. So that was the interpretation developed from the moist profile. The success of this was imaging the Atras fault and picking the Moho. Surprisingly, the Moin thrust doesn't really show up very well in this profile at all. But the really big surprise was the Flannan reflector this event in the mantle. And it was the first hint that the mantle itself could have reflective structure. So this mantle structure became one of the key things to try and resolve. Following on from Moist, the next part of the Burke's programme was the Western Isles and North Channel Survey, which was designed to go down the western side of the British Isles and then through the North Channel between Ireland and Scotland. Well, with the discovery of the Fanon event, an extra part of this survey was added, the Winch 1 line, which is shown on this map, running parallel to the moist profile in the vicinity of the Fanon reflector. Could they find it again? Well, this is this Winch 1 line. And again, we can build up an interpretation. We can draw the reflectors up like this. And we can interpret it and we can see all the key components that were identified in the moist profile. There's reflective deep crust and all that crustal structure associated with the outer ice fault. But then below the moho, we see all that reflectivity, particularly the flannel reflector inclined gently down from west to east. Understanding these mantle reflectors became the next big thing. So with this in mind, the Burps program put together an experiment called DRUM, Deep Reflections from the Upper Mantle. The profile is also named after the director of the Burps program, DRUM Matthews. DRUM was a spectacular experiment and seismic acquisition was adapted to maximise seeing deep, to bring out the low frequency record. So here's the DRUM profile. It's been enhanced a bit over that seen by the original Burps team through modern seismic processing and image enhancement. The sedimentary layers are pretty vague because they were not the target. Remember, the aim was to see deep and therefore to bring out the low frequency record that is characteristic of deep seismic profiles. Notice the scale here in two-way time going from zero all the way down to 25 seconds. So much of this image would be mantle. Again, let's do the interpretation by creating a line drawing. Okay. And now we can think about interpreting it. We can pick out the moho. And we can pick out a whole bunch of crustal structure. The inclined reflectors, presumably representing Caledonian structures. The reflective lower crust and a whole series of fault zones which contain sedimentary basins in their hanging walls, which are part of the so-called West Orkney Basin. But now let's turn our attention to the real targets at depth, below the Moho. And there we can see the Flannan reflective zone coming down, picked out in green, and then they found another reflector which was 
at about 15 seconds to wait time and therefore would only just have been coming in on the Moyston winch lines, we can see something the Birds team named the W reflector, although perhaps it should be called the WTF reflector. What is this zone? Five seconds below the Moho. Is the W reflector actually the base of the crust? And the Moho, something actually within the continental crust? Well, we'll leave that hanging. Let's just put the rest of the interpretation back. So that's what we learned from Drum. So the three surveys so far have recognised the Flannan reflective zone. What's its geometry? So the Flannan event and those structures have all been imaged on lines that are running more or less east-west and are giving us essentially a two-dimensional picture of the crustal and indeed upper mantle structure. The next challenge was to try and map out some of these deeper reflectors, particularly the Flannan event. And so the Burps team designed an experiment to give a 3D view. The experiment was called GRID. It's not an acronym. And this is where all the lines are. Let's just look at two of these lines is the first one, which is running north-south. On this profile, we'll just label two of the key events. We can recognize the, the moho, and there forming that bow-like shape is the flannel reflector. And we can see that perhaps more clearly when we add the other line to make a cross and a box cut that we can see in here. So we can tie the east-west and north-south lines together to identify the structure of these reflectors. And that's what the Burps team did. So let's go back to our map in here and build up contours on the Flannan event. Here they go. These contours are in two-way time. So we can see when last seen, the Flannan reflector is down there at somewhere like 17 seconds. And we can see that it climbs all the way up to perhaps um, 10 seconds and over to 6 seconds and up into the continental crust as we get over towards the western side of the profile. We can see that the general trend of the Flannan reflector is north-south, but as we go to the north, it strikes swings round to lie northwest southeast. And this was the first three-dimensional mapping of a mantle structure. It's quite remarkable that we're able to do that sort of thing. Let's just pull away the seismic so we can see the structure contour pattern rather more clearly. Now, the final part of the Burps program was to acquire a special line running across the Flannan event to try and image it even more clearly. This is the GRID 17 line acquired in 1987. And here it is. It's otherwise known as the Synthetic Large Aperture Velocity Experiment, or SLAVE. And to get penetration deep and to get a better idea of the velocity structure in here, the experiment used two seismic vessels, and the records from their streamers provided a larger aperture, but also could be stacked to get a higher resolution image, increasing the signal to noise ratio. So let's do our interpretation of this. Let's do the line drawing through there and fade out the seismic a bit. And you can see the Moho event running through there at around 10 seconds is particularly prominent. We can see the Flannan event climbing up towards the Moho as you go left and then inclining over to perhaps join a zone of reflectivity in the lower crust. And there on the right, we can just pick out the W reflector coming in. So there's our moho, the reflective lower crust and inclined reflectors above. I've not bothered to show the basins and associated faults in the shallow crust here. And there's the flannel reflective zone coming up to the moho. The moho apparently not offset by it. And there on the right is the W reflector just coming in at the right hand side of the image. So let's just bring out some of the seismic character to create an image using some image enhancement methods that weren't available to the Burps team in the late 1980s. So here is this enhanced image. And it brings out the reflectivity rather more clearly. If you like, this is a digital line drawing with the moho coming through here and the Flannan reflective zone climbing up to and apparently crossing the moho but not offsetting it. 
So all this seismic acquisition by the Burps Group through the early to mid 1980s is a history of improved seismic imaging. So let's just contrast these four images. Moist, the first one, acquired with standard industry techniques, a relatively short streamer, a relatively weak seismic source, and a pretty noisy image. You can still pick out the flannel events down in here. The winch profile, acquired a year later, bringing out the flannel event even more clearly. Moving on to the drum line, recorded using a large air gun source, a configuration of receivers that maximise the low frequency content, and a long seismic record of 30 seconds that brought out the continuity of these upper mantle reflectors. And then finally, the grid 17 or slave line, acquired in 1987 using two ships, getting a long offset and merging those data together, which greatly increased the signal to noise ratio, bringing out those remarkable structures that we can see the continuity of the MOHO and those sub MOHO reflectors, the Flannan and W reflector events. And that's what we see in a modern enhanced image. Well, but synthesized their understanding of the upper lithosphere structure based on these images from Northern Scotland into what they called a typical burp, which represents a cartoon of the seismic structure. Starting at the surface, we have half graben with faults and a semi-transparent upper crust. In contrast, the lower crust is generally reflective. The base of this reflective layer represents the moho, beneath which there are inclined reflectors in the upper mantle. So these are two key discontinuities, a moho at the base of the reflective, therefore lower crust, and the top of the reflective lower crust is sometimes termed the Conrad discontinuity, a rather weak and discontinuous discontinuity compared to the moho, which may represent compositional variations between the upper and lower crust. So that's what we get from this part of the Burt's program an unparalleled image of crustal structure, and indeed structure of the upper mantle. As I said, you can find all these images within the Virtual Seismic Atlas, along with the interpretations that we've shown here.